Hey, this week it's part two of the Ultimate Jazzmaster build. So this week we are digging back into my Ultimate Jazzmaster build. If you haven't taken a look at the first video, I'll definitely link it over here on the side. That video is gonna talk about all the components of this build, and it's also going to take you through a time lapse of me putting it together. Uh, where I left the last video was with some issues I was having with the bridge, uh, and that's what this video is going to focus on primarily. So I left last video with some issues with the bridge and how that was causing this guitar to have a high action. Um, essentially, by putting a tunematic bridge on this with the Bigsby, I increased the height at the bridge, which made it so I couldn't get the uh, height or the action at the lower strings low enough. Um, I talked about in my last video the two options I had to remedy that. One would be to add a shim at the neck pocket here to angle the neck back, changing the angle of attack of the strings across the fretboard. That would allow me to get a lower action. Secondly, the one I ultimately ended up going with was recessing the bridge. So that is sinking this bridge down into the body of the guitar. Uh, I talked about last video why I wanted to do this and uh, this video is going to talk about how I made the template for uh, routing out the bridge and give you a time lapse of everything that went into that process. Before I get into the time lapse, I just want to say that if you're going to try this at home, it's definitely doable. Just be meticulous and careful with your routing. Don't try to route anything freehand. It never turns out well. And just take your time. Uh, it's not a difficult process. It's just something that really you have to be careful with. So with that, let's check out the time lapse and it'll take you through everything from the teardown to the reassembly of this guitar after routing out the bridge slot. Thank you. 
So I hope you guys like that time lapse. Uh, it was definitely a cool experience for me. It's the first time I've done anything to a guitar that's not reversible. Um, I will say that I'm very happy with my results. The routing was uh, excellent. I didn't have any burrs or breaks or anything in the body. Um, as you can see here is my action is definitely where I like it now, just above buzzing at the you know 15th, 16th fret. Um, really happy with the process and would suggest it to anybody who has this type of setup rather than going with a neck shim. The reason I say that is neck shims, although you can buy them from places like Stumac, you're kind of guessing at the angle that you need or the height that you need, and they're also pretty expensive for a little piece of wood. So some things I want to talk about with this build now that I've recessed the bridge, starting with the bridge itself. As you can see, I don't have that tunematic bridge that I showed in the first video on this guitar anymore. I have a locking roller bridge. Um, this comes from just playing the guitar for two or three days after I recessed the bridge. Uh, it didn't really have to do anything with the action. It was more about the strings not staying in the saddles for the tunematic bridge that I had bought. Um, I probably could have filed those saddles out and still used that tunematic, but for 20 bucks on Amazon to get the locking roller bridge, which they say goes well with a Bigsby, I tend to believe what I read in some of those cases. So I ended up going with that and just saved my time, spent the 20 bucks and went with a roller bridge. Additionally, I didn't talk about the weight of this guitar on my last video. I was actually quite surprised. This came in at just under eight pounds, which I think is pretty light for a jazz master, especially one with a squire uh, body, neck, and the Bigsby on the back, which definitely adds some weight. Um, it plays nice. It's not too heavy on the shoulder happy with the weight overall. Lastly, I just want to talk about the pickups in this. I mentioned on the last video that these are 65 Fender Jazzmaster pickups. They're low output. I believe the bridge is a little bit scooped. And for me, being a Tele guy, I noticed this also is quite bright. Um, I will say that I do like this guitar played more through my bass breaker amp, so my more Marshall-y type amp than a Fender amp. I just find it works really better when it gets dirty. I don't know, it's personal taste I think, but for me this is probably gonna be something that I always have a fuzz pedal in front of. In the last video I wasn't able to give you guys some demos of this. I think I've got it to a place now where I'm, I'm cool to show you guys uh, what this can do. So I'll play you guys some pretty common jazz master tunes. You can let me know what you think. Signing off, I gotta say that you know this build I'm really happy with. It's definitely something that's gonna be in a stand or hung on the wall in within arm's reach. So with that, uh, if you guys have any comments or questions on the video, on the build, on the process of recessing the bridge, definitely hit me up in the comment section below. And other than that, remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.